What's up guys, I'm KBHD here. So this is the Galaxy S10, and this phone is really hot right now, obviously. And one of the main reasons for that is the display. Some people love it, some people hate it, but there's no really arguing that there's not really a lot like it out there. So this is a closer look at what makes the Galaxy S10 so special, that screen. So I've said in videos before, this is the best display on any phone. There are really three main characteristics that make this such a unique display. Number one, the hole punch camera cutout. Number two, the ultrasonic fingerprint reader. And number three, just the quality of the panel itself. So to start with the hole punch cutout, it's pretty straightforward. On our way to bezel-less displays, we got notches, we got smaller notches, and then eventually we got things like the fingerprint readers moving behind the display glass. So the only thing left is the front facing camera. So in Galaxy S10, it's a laser cut hole in Samsung's AMOLED panel, a process that's not totally unique. I mean, we saw the cutout in the Honor View 20, but that was an LCD display. This is of course an OLED. So this being the first in an OLED. And Samsung is really proud of that and how precise it is. And I can vouch the hole punch is definitely a little tighter around the actual camera than Honor's. Also something interesting. So the Galaxy S10 has that single cutout while the Galaxy S10 Plus has a dual cutout on the top corner. I was told that that second spot is for a depth sensor and that this is not a second camera. But when you open the camera app on the S10 Plus, you get these two buttons, which looks like a normal and a wide, a normal one for one person, and you click it and the wide angle for multiple people. It seems to be two different camera angles. Turns out this is literally just cropping in on one wide angle sensor. So if you cover the right hand side of the cutout and swap between the cameras, they both work. And if you cover the left hand side, it's blocking both angles. So this button is literally just cropping in and out of one camera, fun fact. The right hand side cutout really is just for a depth sensor for portrait mode. Anyway, I'll have more thoughts on how it looks with videos and full screen games and just generally getting used to it and things like that in the full review. But so far it's actually really not that bad at all. I mean, despite it being basically a notch, I find it a little less obtrusive than an actual notch. Also for those wondering, this is how screenshots look on the S10 Plus when it's drawing that animation around the camera cutout. All right, so the second distinguishing feature here is the ultrasonic fingerprint reader underneath the display. So you remember, maybe if you were here, the first uh, durability test I did with one of the earliest under glass fingerprint sensors, that was an optical sensor. Now I'm not gonna go that far again with sandpaper and everything, because uh, this is my only Galaxy S10, but there are still some unique questions now about the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor versus optical. So number one, just around the same page about what ultrasonic is, that means it's using really high frequency sound waves firing off of your finger to map the depth of the ridges of your fingerprint in 3D. So when you hear it like that, that is way more advanced than having the optical sensor, which is literally a tiny camera taking a little 2D snapshot of your finger when it lights it up when your finger's on the glass. Uh, so this is more secure and more difficult to duplicate. Is it faster? Sometimes a little bit, kinda. So from my experience, if you just hold your finger down like normal, it won't seem that much faster, mostly because this is just how we've gotten used to these fingerprint sensors. But what you'll really notice is if you don't hold your finger down as long or don't press it nearly as firmly, you can basically just touch the screen for a split second and it unlocks. This would trigger an optical sensor to ask you to hold it down for longer, but with the ultrasonic, it really is much faster if you just touch your finger just lightly. That is really impressive. And of course, the fact that you don't have to light up the display to read your finger. That is a real advantage and I love that. And it's supposed to be better at reading your finger through dirt and water. So if your finger is wet or something, it'll work better. So let's find out. All right, so I have here uh, some water. I think in a typical situation where you might need to unlock your fingerprint, but it has something on it, is maybe you're working out or something and you're sweating. So I'm gonna use Galaxy S10 and OnePlus 6T as two examples of fingerprint readers that uh, need to be unlocked. All right, so let's start with OnePlus 6T. Under the glass, works perfectly, so that's good. Get some water on my hand, unlock it, or try to unlock it, and I'm getting a good old not recognized. And it's asking for that swipe. Doesn't recognize me just with a little bit of water on my thumb. So I guess let's go to the Galaxy S10 straight off the bat. If I dry my hand, dry hand works perfectly. So I'll get some water on my hand and it still worked. That works pretty flawlessly. Let's give that another go. No problem. 
no problem at all. All right, another thing that was asked a lot in the community forums uh, when I asked you guys what you wanted to know about Galaxy S10 was screen protectors. Does the screen protector work with the Galaxy S10's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor? More importantly, what types of screen protectors work? So I have a regular screen protector and I have a glass screen protector. All right, so the first we'll try is, this is a regular screen protector. It was made for Galaxy S10 and you can already buy this in stores. Uh, but for right now, while the screen protector's not on, it works. It doesn't even have to be a perfect install for this demo. So this may be the messiest screen protector install of all time. But as long as I get the bubbles out around the screen protector fingerprint reader, which I have, then it should work. So I'm gonna go ahead and... Yep, you can use a fingerprint reader with a screen protector on Galaxy S10. You can try the glass one. So a hint that this might not work is you can go into an AT&T store or any carrier store right now that's carrying this phone and you can buy a Galaxy S10. You can buy a regular screen protector for the Galaxy S10, but they won't sell you a glass screen protector for the Galaxy S10 because they don't make them. So this is a glass screen protector for the iPhone. There's a couple different types, but they're essentially all the same thing. They're supposed to be shatter resistant. You put this tempered glass over your display to give you that extra durability. But the ultrasonic fingerprint reader, I'm gonna guess right now, probably won't be able to read through this glass. So right now, no screen protector on, unlocks just fine. So step one, peel this layer of adhesive off. And I'm just gonna put it straight across the bottom right there. And now there's a glass screen protector over the bottom of the phone. Have you ever seen an installation this bad? Hopefully not. So let's see if this will work through the glass. It knows there's a finger there. And it's asking me to cover the whole fingerprint sensor, but it's not detecting. If I take this off, so uh, that's a no-go on glass screen protector for Galaxy S10. Yes to a regular one, but uh, unless you want to get one of those weird screen protectors with a circular cutout around the fingerprint reader, uh, I would say no to glass. All right, so the last big bullet point for this display and just the panel itself is how good it is, period. So resolution, 3040 by 1440, uh, 3K. The brightness is 1200 nits at its peak brightness, which is brighter than most TVs. It's 6.4 inches from corner to corner on the S10 Plus. It has the curved edges like we talk about, the super thin top and bottom bezels. Physically, it's top notch. Well, I guess you can't say it's, it's not t actually top notch because the notch is not the, you get what I mean. So there are two display modes. Out the box, it's on this natural mode, which actually to my eye, for the first time ever in a Samsung phone, actually looks a bit muted out the box. And then there's vivid mode, which is very saturated. Vivid is a great word for it. There's still that adjustable color temperature and all that, but that's the Samsung look that you're used to. Also out the box, it's gonna be at its 2280 by 1080 resolution instead of max, which is to preserve battery life. But if you want that extra bit of crispiness, especially when watching video, you can go ahead and bump that up in the display settings and enjoy all of the pixels in their 3K glory. But as of right now, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Galaxy S10's display. It's one of the reasons people like this phone so much and many other Samsung displays, as I've said in the past. That's why their phones are popular, but let me know what you guys think. Of course, this is not the full review. That video is in the pipeline as well, so feel free to subscribe to see that when it comes out. And of course, you can share this one with those who are interested in the Galaxy S10. Thanks for watching. Catching out as the next one. Peace.